Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a great little junior gun on test, the Crossman Inferno. But first, I might have to pest around the pheasant release pens. I'm targeting the woods around the pheasant release pen this evening. Now these areas tend to be a real vermin magnet, not least because they tend to contain the highest concentration of pheasant feeders around the chute, which provide a really rich source of nutrition for all kinds of unwanted visitors. We've certainly accounted for our fair share of squirrels and rats from underneath grain hoppers during past winter sessions for the show. So let's take a look around this one this evening and I'll try and explain how to get the best from these areas. Nothing in that one. Now keepers set lines of traps in an effort to keep pest numbers down, but it's inevitable that plenty will learn to dodge those traps and never get caught. And that's where help from air gun shooters like you and me comes in handy. If you share your shoot with a game shoot, it's important to forge a good relationship with the gamekeeper. And you can do that by offering to help out with tasks like checking traps, Ping them a text to let them know when you're going out shooting, where you're going to go and which traps you'll be able to check, and it saves them a job. Also, in the early days, it pays to have a walk round with the keeper and find out exactly when, where and what you can shoot and make sure that you keep to it. Some keepers will be happy for you to shoot in and around pheasant release pens throughout the year, as long as you don't cause the birds too much disturbance, while others may ask you to hold back until after the pheasant shooting season finishes. And when you're in touch with the keeper, make sure you get a set of the shoot dates. The last thing you want to do is turn up with your air gun during a shoot day. And they may even ask you to hold back the day before so you don't disturb the birds. This is what they're after. The grain put out for pheasants creates a nutritious feed source for woodland pests and at a time of year when they need it the most. You can expect to find grey squirrels, rats, corvids and even wood pigeons raiding this stuff. Feeding all those extra mouths is an unwelcome cost that the shoot can do without. I'm going to set up a bit further up the hill and see if we can catch some of the culprits in the act. It's always worth investigating log stacks around a pheasant chute because they tend to be the sort of place where rats like to nest. So always look out for holes, runs and even droppings. There's nothing around today but that could all change if the weather turns a bit colder. That harsh cold weather pushes the rats in off the fields into the woods looking for shelter and feed. What I am going to use this for today is a backdrop so I can dig in here and use it as a bit of cover. Right, the spot I've chosen actually enables me to cover two feeders, but they're both a bit tricky. One of them, the base is obscured by wire mesh, and the other one's just a little bit too close to actually shoot squirrels from underneath. However, I'm not too worried, because the main aim today is going to be to try and intercept those squirrels as they're making their way down towards the feeders. So if I pick them off on the ground or up in the trees, shots should present themselves at about the right sort of range. Thank you. 
Right, we've given this spot the best part of an hour and we haven't seen a single sign of a squirrel. I'm not entirely surprised as we've caused a fair amount of disturbance here. So what I'm going to do is pack up my kit, move across to the other side and see if we can see anything moving over there. I can't directly cover any of the pheasant feeders from this spot, but it does give me a very clear view of some of the trees that the squirrels are going to need to pass through if they're going to get across and feed on that grain. Also, it gives me a really commanding view of the perimeter fence of the release pen. Now, the line that that fence creates is used like a highway by woodland wildlife. You'll often see a lot of deer slots running alongside it, and likewise, squirrels will follow it too. They spend a lot more time on the ground than most people realise, so it's always worth keeping a very close eye there. I didn't see that one come out, I just looked around and it was sat there. It's dropped down stone dead, so I'm not going to go crunching on over there to pick it up just yet. I'll sit back down, wait and see if any more come out. Ironically, We've seen a few squirrels moving over towards where we started. So what I'm going to do is head across, pick up the one that we've had, and then move back over to that side for the last half hour of light. Right, well we've got a bit of light left, so we'll just sit here nice and quietly and see what happens. Well, there's no denying that that one was out after the grain. It twitched for a bit, but it was a really solid headshot. It was just a nervous reaction.
Right, well Nicky's running out of light to film by now, so I'm going to pack up my kit, head over and pick up that squirrel. Well, there's no questioning that for a headshot. That one's caught right in the brain box and won't have known what hit it. It's not been an easy evening, and we've certainly not seen as many squirrels as I'd expected, but we've still managed to account for two, and that's gonna be two less squirrels raiding those feeders in the morning. I also don't doubt that they're gonna get even more dependent on that grain as the weather turns colder. So we'll be back to pick them off. There's certainly no such thing as a free lunch if you're a grain stealing squirrel. And now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. There's a chance to win a Kral Puncher pre-charged airgun with £499 in the January issue of Airgun Shooter magazine, out now. Plus, everyone who enters the free competition will be entered into a prize draw, in which UK distributor Rangerite is giving away no less than 10,000 targets. So even if you don't win the puncher, you could still be one of 200 winners to receive 50 of Flip Target's new paper targets. Entry details can be found in the magazine and on the Airgun Shooter Facebook page. Big name exhibitors continue to sign up for the UK Game Fair, which takes place at Stony Park on the 22nd to the 24th of July. Confirmed exhibitors include Beretta, GMK, Viking Arms, Ruag and Deer Hunter, to name just a few. The show, which replaces the now-defunct CLA Game Fair, promises a high-quality focus on shooting with pre-booked adult admission costing just £17.50. To book tickets, visit www.ukgamefair.com. Shooting has boosted tourism in Wales. At a cross-party group meeting, the Deputy Minister for Culture, Sport and Tourism was among Gwyn Evans of Betus Hall, Anthony Rosser of Lake Vernery Hotel and Andrew Granger of the Scottish Country Sports Tourism Group, who explained how similar success had been achieved in Scotland. Angela Burns, the chair of the cross-party group, said it is the goal to raise levels of knowledge within the National Assembly about the value of shooting in Wales. And finally, plans to find the next Olympic shooting medalist have been announced. British Shooting has set up a talent network of grounds across the UK, which will work with the governing body to identify and recruit future Olympic stars. Olympic gold medalist Peter Wilson said the network was a brilliant idea, and that the more British Shooting does to find talent at the grassroots level, the better. That was the Air Gun Show News. We've got the Crossman Inferno on the bench this week, which at first glance is a stylish looking brake barrel for juniors. It's got a price tag of just £120, so it's certainly affordable. Let's see what else it's got going for it. The Inferno weighs less than two kilos unscoped, so it's an air gun that most smaller shooters are going to be able to handle. But measuring 103 centimetres from end to end, it's certainly not a miniature. I think its proportions are just about perfect for younger teenagers. Apart from looking pretty neat, the ambidextrous synthetic stock makes for a very comfortable hold, and its lightly stippled finish certainly helps to improve grip. The long forend provides plenty of contact for a variety of different holds, and the rubber recoil pad sits very snug in the shoulder. The sculpted pistol grip feels great, and although it's been designed to fit smaller hands, it's plenty big enough for me. The large cutaway behind the grip helps to shave down weight, but also accommodates a very secure thumb around hold. If you're using telescopic sights, you may just find the cheek piece feels a little too low. However, it's the perfect height to give great eye alignment when you're using the Inferno with its supplied open sights. And those sights are a very bright set of fibre optics. 
They're adjustable for windage and elevation and by very fine increments too, so you can get them dead on. The cylinder is also machined with dovetail rails if you did want to fit the Inferno with a set of tellies. The engineering is very good for an air gun at this price point and I particularly like the anti-glare synthetic finish on the barrel. Apart from providing protection from the elements, it also offers a really good shield against knocks and bumps. The tapered brake at the end of the barrel looks really good and also provides a secure purchase when cocking the gun. This little springer produces just under 6 foot pounds, which combined with a relatively long barrel makes it extremely easy to cock. That exceptionally smooth cocking stroke also engages the automatic safety catch before you load a pellet direct to the breech. The barrel then snaps back up into a reassuringly secure lockup. Although not the prettiest of trigger blades, it's actually quite comfortable and the two-stage unit is surprisingly good considering the Inferno's price. The first stage has just the right loading and the second stage is very positive and predictable with barely any discernible creep. It is a bit on the heavy side but the last thing you want on a junior gun is a hair trigger. The automatic safety catch is located at the rear of the cylinder and shows a clear white marker when it's in the safe position. You push it forwards when you're ready to take the shot and I particularly like the fact that it can be reset without having to recock the gun. At just six foot pounds, the Inferno is really designed to be a close range tin toppler and I'm gonna struggle to exploit its full accuracy just using open sights. Nonetheless, we're gonna set up a paper target at 20 meters and see what I can do. Well, for a six foot pound 2.2, with open sights at 20 meters, I will definitely settle for that. Squinting down the range, I reckon that group's fallen within about an inch. Now, because this gun's relatively low powered, it's not working very hard. That means it's got a really smooth firing cycle and it's an absolute joy to shoot. To sum up, the Crossman Inferno, distributed in the UK by ASI, is a really fun and easy air gun to shoot. And being so affordable and smooth to cock and shoot, it's a great little air gun to get youngsters started on. But it's not just one for the kids. The stock is plenty big enough to fit most adults who may just find that six foot pound power level to be a real asset if they're looking for an affordable air gun for some backyard plinking. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through their Airgun membership package.